Someone asked me recently why wearing Bluetooth is bad. In fact, I've had people say that Bluetooth is not bad, and there are people who still question it. But in the meantime, they'll just keep on using their Bluetooth devices. So, I want to address this, because I probably didn't make it clear. See, I am not against technology. I just feel we would be much healthier human beings limiting, putting a cap on the amount of electromagnetic chaos that we constantly bombard ourselves with. So, the first thing that you have to understand is that these companies that manufacture Bluetooth technology, they are very powerful and will actively campaign to suppress any information suggesting that Bluetooth technology is dangerous. So, what you end up with is a lot of research bias, where these companies only want to focus on why it's safe, and rarely focus on or put any resources into understanding why it's not safe. Do you see? Do you guys remember in another video some time ago, I mentioned how the Bluetooth symbol looked like an old runic symbol? Well, it turns out that is true. But I'll get to that in a moment. We live in a world where we can gain a better understanding of things. We have access to information like never before. The only problem is, it's hard to decide which information to choose from. I mean, you can't even get a straight number these days from anyone. Have you ever noticed that? It doesn't matter what it is. It could be the number of deaths reported from a single event. And you will keep coming across different numbers. The same with timelines and dates of events. The real number exists, you just don't know which one it is. So let's get into it because I know many of you have questions about this Viking magic. They used to call it short link radio technology. It was invented by four men, Tord Wingren, Jop Hartson, Sven Madison, and Nils Rydbeck for Ericsson Mobile in 1989. There was a woman by the name of Heidi Lamar who was credited for inventing spread spectrum communication technology patented in 1942. Bluetooth is used to put out pulses of short length radio waves. The frequency range for these radio waves is from 2.4 to 2.48 gigahertz. It uses what is called adaptive frequency hopping to send packets to a certain device, meaning it takes the frequency band and divides it into several channels, around 40 and uses those channels to hop the data packet over to the target device to avoid interference from overlapping transmissions. Now, in Bluetooth manufacturing, there is what's called the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, or SIG. And they are the ones who manage the standards of Bluetooth technology to ensure the device is compatible with other devices according to Bluetooth standards. And the device has to meet those standards in order to be considered a Bluetooth device. Within this standard, you have three classes of transmission. You have a class one device. These are the strongest with a range that can go over 300 feet, but they are normally used for things like laptops and PCs. They put out a max power of 100 milliwatts. Next you have class 2 and this is the most common. These are the ones they use in headphones, headsets, keyboards, mice, portable speakers, things like that. 2.5 milliwatts with a 20 to 30 foot range. 
And then you have class three, which is the weakest, with a 10 to 20 foot range at one milliwatt. Now, of course, the more powerful the device, the more radiation it emits. The Bluetooth technology of today is, of course, not the same as it was a few years ago. So they have different classes and also different versions, from Bluetooth 1.0 to 5.0. That means the data packet size has increased, the speed of transfer has increased, and the power has increased, as well as the distance of transmission, so that it can keep up with other devices that they are making smarter. The thing people don't get are the effects of non-ionizing, non-thermal radiation. But it is still microwave radiation coming out of the cell phone and the Bluetooth device. The argument remains, however, over the non-heating effects of the low-power microwave and radio wave radiation. In that range of devices, you have your television or monitor, radio, tag reader, baby monitors, smart meters, microwave ovens, Wi-Fi. And we understand that it's not really healthy to surround yourself with too many of these devices. Bluetooth is in that category of devices. And the main issues with this is many people are putting these devices in their ear as close to the brain as possible. Some of these headsets come with two separate devices that communicate with each other through your brain as they communicate with your cell phone. And a lot of those same people will carry that cell phone on their person, either in their hand or in their pocket while using Bluetooth, with constant pulses of microwaves passing through their body. Cell phone use could damage semen. Men who keep cell phones in a trouser pocket in the talk mode while using a Bluetooth device may experience decreased fertility, according to researchers. We found increased oxidative stress and a decrease in sperm motility, said investigator Ashok Agrawal, PhD director of reproductive research at Cleveland Clinic in Ohio. What they found was an increased production of free radicals and semen after exposing them to cell phone radiation emitted from the cell phone in the trouser pocket on talk mode when communicating with a Bluetooth headset. An 18% increase. So there's something called the inverse square law of physics. Basically the force of gravity acting between any two objects is inversely proportional to the square of the separation distance between the object's centers. So let me put it to you this way when it comes to radiation. You could be standing right next to a piece of radioactive graphite. Now, you'll get a pretty good dose standing right next to it, and you would get an even lesser dose if it was far away from you. But if you bend over to touch or pick up that piece of graphite, it's over. Because when there is no distance between us and the source of the radiation, we take the full force. That's what radiation does. And this is the problem with putting these devices right next to your brain for long periods of time, often. So what can this type of radiation do to the brain? Well. The biggest threat here is brain cancer. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, World Health Organization, IARC, classifies radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans. Lyon, France, May 31st, 2011. The WHO, International Agency for Research on Cancer, has classified radio frequency electromagnetic fields as possibly carcinogenic to humans based on an increased risk for glioma, a malignant type of brain cancer associated with wireless phone use. This is based on studies that showed an increase of 40% for glioma and acoustic neuroma. There's another document I wanted to show you guys here. 
The Biological Effects of Weak Electromagnetic Fields Problems and Solutions by Dr. Andrew Goldsworthy of the College of London, March 2012. Listen to this because this is interesting. Many of the reported biological effects of non-ionizing electromagnetic fields occur at levels too low to cause significant heating. They are non-thermal. Most of them can be accounted for by electrical effects on living cells and their membranes. The alternating fields generate alternating electric currents that flow through cells and tissues and remove structurally important calcium ions from cell membranes, which then makes them leak. Electromagnetically treated water, as generated by electronic water conditioners used to remove lime scale from plumbing, has similar effects implying that the effects of the fields can also be carried in the bloodstream. Virtually, all of the non-thermal effects of electromagnetic radiation can be accounted for by the leakage of cell membranes. And that's another thing, folks. Even if you are getting radiation in one part of the body, the blood will carry that radiation from that specific area through the bloodstream to the rest of your body. Now, most of them involve the inward leakage of free calcium ions down an enormous electrochemical gradient to affect the calcium sensitive enzyme systems. This is the normal mechanism by which cells sense mechanical membrane damage. They normally respond by triggering mechanisms that stimulate growth and repair, including the MAP kinase cascades, which amplify the signal. If the damage is not too severe or prolonged, we see a stimulation of growth and the effect seems beneficial. But if the exposure is prolonged, these mechanisms are overcome and the result is ultimately harmful. This phenomenon occurs with both ionizing and non-ionizing radiation and is called radiation hormesis. Mood disorders, sleeping issues, Alzheimer's, birth defects, dizziness, cancer, all linked to these types of devices. Using a Bluetooth device is better than holding a cell phone to your head, I'll give you that. Even having a standard wired headset still gives off EMFs, and some of those are not safe for extended use either. Air tube headphones are said to cut the EMF radiation by around 99%, so those may be something to look into. They make them with the intent to cut the EMF radiation. Now, how many of you know where the name Bluetooth comes from? Well, the founder of the Bluetooth Special Interest Group, Jim Kardec, got the name from a book entitled The Long Ships. In the book was the King of Denmark, King Harold Blatand Gormson, or Harold Bluetooth Gormson, a king that was known best for uniting Norway and Denmark having a dead tooth and a liking to blueberries. The runic symbol used is the Burkana, which is the symbol for the goddess of the birch. See, there is always some god or goddess involved. How many times have I done this, folks? How many videos have I shown you how these things link to gods from ancient mythology and history? It is a symbol used in Viking or Norse magic. It is the 18th ruin of fertility, magic, and growth. The question is though, who is the birch goddess? Well, in Germanic paganism, it is Nerthus, the goddess of fertility. In Norse mythology, however, it is Hel, the goddess of death. There is more to come, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you have been enjoying these uploads as we keep moving from here. Be sure to visit woodwardentertainment.com and the Woodward Entertainment Store. You can follow me on Instagram at jwoodward. And until next time, folks, be EMF conscious. Don't be a fanatic, of course. We can't be perfect. But at the same time, just be careful. And as always, my friends, stay awake, stay aware. Stay safe, and I'll talk to you all soon.